Obstetric and newborn providers should establish effective communication to better coordinate care. Before every birth, you should ask and know the answers to these four questions. Use the responses to determine if you have the necessary personnel and equipment. Thanks for coming for this delivery. We have a term baby. All right. Um, how many weeks? 39 weeks. Um, what about the amniotic fluid? Is it clear? It's clear. Any other risk factors we need to know? No, we've had a good tracing so far. Okay. And then what about um, your plan for cord clamping? Um, we can do delayed cord clamping. If you see any reason to stop, just let me know and I'll go ahead and clamp. All right. Hey, I'm glad you're here. I needed your help because we have a delivery coming up and there's been some intermittent cat two strips that puts them kind of more at risk. Okay. Right now this baby is 39 weeks and there's no other risk factors with mom. Um, so what I'll do is I'll prepare the baby and start the initial resuscitation with mom. If I need to bring the baby over, I'll bring him over here to the warmer. Um, if you can help kind of prepare some of the items and then when I bring the baby, you can listen for the heart rate and um, the breath sounds. I'm ready. All supplies and equipment necessary for a complete resuscitation must be readily available for every birth. You should be familiar with the location and use of all the supplies and equipment in your work area. All deliveries require at least one qualified individual solely responsible for the stabilization of the baby at delivery and skilled in the initial steps and giving positive pressure ventilation. Two qualified individuals should be present solely for the baby when any risk factor is identified that increases the likelihood of neonatal resuscitation. A qualified team with full resuscitation skills should be immediately available if more advanced measures are required. If the birth is expected to require advanced resuscitation, then a team of four or more qualified providers with advanced resuscitation skills should already be in the room. Okay, one more push. All right, baby's out. All right, he's really not breathing that well, but I'm gonna go ahead and stimulate him. Do you want me to clamp now? Let's just wait a little bit. Um, sometimes he'll start kind of reading on his own. 15 Ooh. seconds. Okay, he's really not responding very well. Maybe we should no. take him to the warmer. Auscultating. I do not, I do not hear the heart rate above 100. It's below 100. Okay. It's been about one minute of life. It looks like it's correlating with that. So I think we should start PPB. Okay. Do you need me to call the neo response team? Yes. Okay. Ventilation of the newborn's lungs is the single most important and effective step in neonatal resuscitation. Thus, learning how to provide PPV is the foundation of neonatal resuscitation. Before birth, you should have set up your PPV equipment. Shown here is a self-inflating bag. If this bag is attached to an oxygen source, starting oxygen concentration should be 21% for 35 weeks gestation or greater, and between 21 and 30% for those less than 35 weeks. Initial peak inspiratory pressure, PIP, is determined by how hard you squeeze the bag and should start between 20 and 25 centimeters of water. How will you know that you are providing effective ventilation? The most important indicator will be a rising heart rate. Heart rate should be on the rise after 15 seconds of effective PPV. If the heart rate is increasing, then continue PPV until you determine the baby no longer needs PPV. If the heart rate is not increasing, check for chest movement. Chest movement can be assessed visually or by gently feeling for a rise and fall of chest movement with your hand. If the chest is not moving, then take ventilation correction steps immediately until PPV is able to move the chest. Continue PPV that moves the chest for 30 seconds and then reassess heart rate. All right, I don't see the heart rate coming up and there's a good um, signal on the monitor. I can't tell if there's a good chest rise. Can you assess? Okay, I'll go ahead and listen and look. I do not see chest rise and the heart rate is below 100. Okay, I'll just need to take corrective measures using Mr. Sopa. Okay. Mr. Sopa is a mnemonic to remember the six ventilation correction steps to take when you determine that you are not providing effective ventilation. After each correction step, give five breaths of PPV to assess if ventilation has been corrected. 
M and R are for mask adjustment and reposition the airway. Make sure the mask fits properly and forms a good seal. Place the head in the sniffing position. S and O are for suction mouth and nose and open the mouth. Be sure the mouth stays open when you reapply the mask. P is for pressure increase. Increase PIP cautiously, but inflating the lungs may require higher inspiratory pressure initially. A is for alternative airway. You can place a laryngeal mask airway even if you are not able to place an endotracheal tube. To place an LMA, deflate the cuff around the mask and remove the syringe. Open the baby's mouth and press the tip against the hard palate. Advance the LMA inward with a circular motion. Stop advancing when you feel resistance. Then inflate the cuff to seal the mask over the airway. Initiate PPV and check for CO2 detection as you would for an endotracheal tube. Let's try Mr. Sopa. Okay, let's go ahead and check the mask and reposition. Okay, I've got a great seal in the position, in the sniffing position. So let's reassess after five breaths. Okay. I still don't see any chest rise and the heart rate is still below 100. Let's go ahead and move over to uh, suctioning and opening the airway. Okay. All right. Let's reassess again after five breaths. Still no chest rise. Let's go ahead and increase our pressure. Okay. I'm increasing my PIP. Still no chest rise and heart rate still below 100. All right, maybe you can try placing an LMA sure. as an alternative airway. Okay. I do see chest rise and I do hear an increasing of the heart rate and I do believe, yeah, he's, I do see spontaneous respirations. Yeah, I see that as well. He's starting to breathe on his own. I believe so. I think he's trying to cry. All right, I'm going to take this out okay. and see if how he's breathing. He's breathing <laughs> on his own right now and crying. Yes, he is. Good job, baby. Hey, can I call Leo? Yes. Marshall. Well, Bobby, look great. You don't need us. Well, 